Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 1, Initial Tasks, Chapter 2, Initial AP Configuration. As we saw in the previous video, the AP is where we centrally configure and monitor our entire ACI fabric, either from the GUI or CLI. APICs may be physical appliances, we will display them with the blue icon when we refer to them in this series, virtual machines, displayed with a gray icon, or even cloud-based, which will be displayed in yellow. In this episode, we will start with the physical APIC installation. We will cover the virtual APIC in Module 2 once we learn how to connect virtual environments like Beamware, and then we will cover cloud APIC once we cover multi-site as part of Module 5. Before we start, please consider that as of ACI 4.0, there is one more special type of APIC called APIC-X. This type of APIC is useful when installing apps from ACI App Center, such as App Dynamics Integration, Network Resources Insights, Splunk, and many more. These type of APICs are optional, but may be useful to help you offload the processing power those apps need from the regular APICs, especially if you install several of them. In the previous chapter, we learned how to cable an ACI fabric. We basically connect all leaf switches to all spines and then connect the physical apics to any of those leaves to allow switch auto discovery. Today we will perform the initial setup of those apics by consoling into each of them. Instead of connecting to every switch like in traditional networks, we only need to connect to the apic or apics once and then we'll let ACI do its magic with auto discovery as we will see in the next chapter. Let's console into our first apic where the starting setup utility is shown. As you can see, we pretty much have to make an enter to every default value unless you want to change something. Quite easy, right? In this case, I will leave the defaults for fabric name, fabric ID, active controllers, where we usually have three for high availability purposes, and so on. Remember you can start with one APIC if you don't need HA, like in a lab environment, and you can specify an APIC as either a standby, for example in a 3 plus 1 configuration, or even as APIC X for ACI applications. Let's modify one of the default values just for the sake of it. In this case, I can adjust the TEP address pool to 192.168.00/16. This will be an internal ACI subnet I will use to provision IP addresses automatically to each discovered and authorized spine or leaf in the ACI fabric. This will allow me to manage everything centrally. Plus, it will automate configurations to each element, like BXLAN, ISIS, multicast, and many others. If you adjust this value like I did, keep in mind you need to provision a slash 23 mask or lower as a best practice to accommodate all potential leaves and spines and that you won't be able to change this value later. Communication between the APIC and the spines and leaves will flow on the infrastructure VLAN. In my case, it's 4093. So please make sure you don't use it for any other purposes in your environment. We will end up by setting an IP address mask and gateway to this APIC1, as well as a username and password, and we should be done. If you have more than one APIC, you would need to console into each of them and set the specific values for each of them. In this case, only the name of the APIC, ID, and IP address will change according to each APIC, while everything else should be consistent with the configuration we did for the first one. Finally, go into your web browser Type the IP address of your APIC using HTTPS, and you should see the APIC login window. We are ready to start auto-discovering the spines and leaves now. ACI provides you with a better, simpler, and secure network, any size, anywhere, and on any cloud. If you want to learn more about other common tasks and how ACI radically simplifies network provisioning and operations, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.